Away, good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television, your one-stop morning show for top stories from India and across the globe. I am Ashwarya. Let us start the news bulletin with the headlines. Three-day International Agriculture Conference, Krishi Kumbh in Lucknow. Prime Minister Modi to inaugurate the event via video conferencing. Farmers, scientists, industrialists, research institutions and policy makers to attend the event built around theme of doubling farmers' income. Supreme Court to hear plea by CBI Director Alok Verma against Centre's decision to divest him of his duties and send him on leave. Verma has also sought stay on order to give interim a charge of agency to M. Nageshwar Rao. Notification to be issued for second phase of Chhattisgarh polls to be held on 20th of November, last day for withdrawal of candidature for first phase elections on 12th of November. BJP to kickstart Telangana Assembly polls campaign today. Enforcement Directorate to conduct searches at two locations of human rights watchdog Amnesty International India in Bengaluru. Searches in connection with alleged violation of foreign direct investment norms. And Pooja Dhanda wins bronze in 57 kilogram freestyle bout at the World Wrestling Championship, becomes fourth Indian woman grappler ever to win a medal at the event. Shuttlers PB Sindhu, Kidambi Srikanth and Saina Neval to play quarter-final matches at the French Open Badminton. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the three-day international agriculture conference Krishi Kumbh 2018 in Lucknow via video conferencing today. The event is expected to be a high-profile conglomeration of farmers, scientists, industrialists, research institutions and policy makers. The aim of the event is to generate awareness among farmers, to define latest technologies and to showcase the business opportunities in agro-processing for business houses. It will also showcase uh, the best agro practices in the country. It is aimed at providing an opportunity to the stakeholders to understand the requirements of uh, each other for investment benefits. Farmers, uh, several ministers, uh, senior government officials and other policy makers, international organizations, heads of uh, banks and development institutions and captains of industries are also expected at the event. The event uh, would comprise of uh, the national level exhibition, technical sessions around the theme of doubling farmers' income, business meet and a host of other activities. It will help uh, showcase the agriculture potential of Uttar Pradesh as it is the state with the largest number of uh, farm holdings and the largest number of farmers. The event being organized by the government of Uttar Pradesh in association with the government of India has Israel and Japan as its official partners. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that there is an unprecedented employment and entrepreneurial opportunities in the country today. Citing disbursal of loans under the Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, the Prime Minister said that around 14 crore loans have been disbursed under the scheme and total uh, worth of the loans uh, of uh, 7 lakh crore rupees. Addressing employees of a diamond firm in Surat on Thursday, the Prime Minister said that out of all those who took loans under Mudra, over 3.5 crore youth were first-time entrepreneurs as they have chosen the path of self-employment for the first time. And the government has released the payroll data stating that more than 1.45 crore new subscribers have joined the Employees Provident Fund schemes during the one-year period through August 2018. The Ministry of Statistics and Programme Implementation has been bringing out the employment-relating statistics in the formal sector since April 2018, covering the period uh, September 2017 onwards. It uses information on the number of subscribers who have availed benefits under the three major schemes, namely the Employees Provident Fund, Employees State Insurance Scheme and the National Pension Scheme. And as per the data, the number of new subscribers joining EPF during September 2017 to August 2018 stood at 1 crore 
45,63,864. It further said that about 91 lakh uh, cease to be subscribers offer the retirement fund scheme during the period. However, about 18.55 lakh subscribers who had ceased to be members have restarted their contributions during the period. It further said that the number of new pension uh, scheme subscribers during September 2017 to August 2018 is estimated at 6,89,385. On to some other news, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval has said that India is poised to be a great power and needs strong, stable and decisive government to achieve its political, economic and strategic objectives. Delivering uh, the Sardar Patel Memorial Lecture in New Delhi, Ajit Doval asserted that uh, weak coalitions will be bad for the country. He said uh, weakened democracies can make uh, India a soft power. And for taking India ahead, it will be necessary to take hard decisions which are not necessarily populist. Strong, stable and decisive government for the next 10 years. Let there be no doubt about it. To achieve our national, political, economic and strategic objectives. It cannot be a fragmented government. It has to be decisive. Weak coalitions will be bad for India. Democratic institutions must be strengthened. Rule of law must be adhered to with total commitment, with religious commitment, and countering the false and malicious propaganda should be taken on a war footing. Don't underestimate the strength of the false narrative. And on to the other big story today, the Supreme Court is slated to hear today the petition filed by CBI Director Alok Kumar Verma challenging the decision of the centre to divest him of his duties and send him on leave. He has also sought a stay of the centre's order giving the interim charge of his post to Joint Director M. Nageshwar Rao. The Verma's petition is listed for hearing before a bench comprising Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi and Justices S.K. Kohl and K.F. Joseph. Verma, seeking an urgent hearing on his plea, had said that besides sending the agency's chief and the special CBI director on leave, several officers probing sensitive cases have been changed. Apart from Verma, another plea has been filed in the Supreme Court on Thursday. An NGO, Common Cause, sought a SIT probe into the allegations of corruption against the CBI officials, including special director Rakesh Asthana. The Apex Court has agreed to consider according uh, urgent hearing to the PIL. Rakesh Asana has also been sent on leave as per a government order. And the CBI has said that Alok Verma, who has been uh, divested of his powers, uh, will remain its director and the agency's uh, number two Rakesh Asthana will continue as the special director, while M. Nageshwar Rao has been given interim charge of the agency. In a statement released on Thursday, the CBI said in order to bring the perspective of the Central Vigilance Commission order recommending the divesting of powers of Verma and Asthana, Joint Director M. Nageshwar Rao has been given the charge to look after the duties and functions of the director as an interim arrangement. The CBI also described as false news reports suggesting that uh, seven uh, files were removed asserting that every file in CBI at each level is accounted for. In an unprecedented shake-up in the CBI's 55-year history, both Alok Verma and his deputy, Special Director Rakesh Asthana, were divested of their powers and sent on leave in a dramatic overnight action by the government on Tuesday night. Meanwhile, top BJP and Congress leaders levelled allegations on each other over removal of the CBI chief. The BJP accused Congress chief Rahul Gandhi of manufacturing lies every day on the Rafale jet deal and said that he is uh, hallucinating as his party has lost relevance. Union Minister Prakash Javrekar was responding to the allegations by Rahul Gandhi that the government forced CBI Director Alok Verma to go on indefinite leave over the possibility of him investing the Rafale deal. उनका धीरज समाप्त हुआ है उनको सपने में भी अब राफेल ही दिखता है और इसलिए रोज नया झूठ गठित करते हैं मनगढ़ झूठ जैसे आज राहुल जी ने प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस करके क्या कहा 
सीबीआई डायरेक्टर को इसलिए हटाया क्योंकि वो राफेल की जांच कर रहे थे हद हो गई और भारत की जनता बहुत सूझबूझ वाली है परिपक्व है लेकिन राहुल गांधी को मति भ्रम हुआ है ही इज लिविंग इन हेल्यूसिनेशन सीबीआई वॉज गोइंग टू बिगिन एन इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन द रोल ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑन राफाइल एंड द करप्शन दैट वॉज कैरीड आउट बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन राफाइल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने दो बजे यह काम इसलिए किया क्योंकि सीबीआई डायरेक्टर राफाइल मामले पर इंक्वायरी शुरू करने जा रहे थे All right, let's now switch gears and get to all the election related news. Notification for the second phase of our state assembly polls in Chhattisgarh will be issued today. And with the issuance of notification, the nomination filing process for the second and final phase would also commence. 72 constituencies of the state will go to polls in the second phase on 20th of November. The state will have polls in two phases on 12th and 20th of November. And the final date for filing nominations is uh, 2nd of November and scrutiny of nominations would be completed the next day. And withdrawal of nominations can be done till 5th of November. Meanwhile, today is also the last day for the withdrawal of candidature for the first phase. 18 and Naxal hit constituencies of the state will go to polls in the first phase on 12th of November. And the counting of votes will be done on 11th of December. Meanwhile, the BJP will launch its election campaign in Telangana today for the 7th of December assembly polls with party chief Amit Shah and other big names of the party attending a conclave of its youth wing Bharatiya Janata Party Yuva Morcha in Hyderabad. Amit Shah will address a public rally in Hyderabad on the culminating day of the BJYM national meet which will be held from today till 28th of October. Over 72,000 office bearers of uh, the BJYM are expected to attend the event. The conclave, which is organized once in three years, is being held for the first time in the south of the country. The two-day meeting will be inaugurated by Home Minister Rajnath Singh, along with Union Ministers Nitin Gadkari, Piyush Koyal, Nirmala Sitaraman and Dharmendra Pradhan. The party is also expected to pass a resolution at the event, highlighting the work of the BJP, uh, government at the state level and how the youth wing can contribute to the party's targeted victory in 2019 Lok Sabha polls. And here we'll slip into a very short break. News and updates continue on the other side as well. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. HRD Minister Prakash Javrekar on a Thursday launched a web portals of two schemes with an aim to build a research ecosystem in educational institutions. Impactful Policy Research in Social Sciences or IMPRESS and Scheme for the Promotion of Academic and Research Collaboration, SPRAC, were the two schemes of uh, whose uh, portal were launched. The objective of IMPRESS is to identify and fund research proposals in social sciences with maximum impact on the governance and society. The scheme will be implemented at a total cost of 414 crore rupees till March 2021. The Indian Council of Social Science and Research will be the project implementing agency. Meanwhile, SPARC aims at improving the research ecosystem of India's higher educational institutions by facilitating academic and research collaborations between Indian and foreign institutions. 418 crore rupees have been allotted for SPARC scheme. IIT Kharagpur is the national coordinating institute to implement the SPARC program. And addressing the media, Prakash Javrekar said that the country achieves prosperity on a sustainable basis only through innovation, which can happen only by good research. Science and technology ke vishay te. Ab hum social science mein bhi, yani samajik vigyan mein bhi bahut mahatvapurna anusandhan aur shodh honne ki jurat hai. Isko samasthe huye ek nai scheme शुरू कर रहे हैं जिसका नाम होगा इम्प्रेस एक प्रभावी पॉलिसी रिसर्च हो 
और सामाजिक विज्ञान में हो ये उसकी कल्पना है इसके लिए सरकार ने 414 करोड़ रुपए दो साल के लिए रखे हैं इसमें 1500 प्रोजेक्ट्स होंगे इसमें हर प्रोजेक्ट के लिए 20-25 लाख रुपए दिए जाएंगे शोधकर्ताओं को शोधकर्ताएं जो ट्वेल्व बी जो अच्छे इंस्टीट्यूट्स हैं And uh, on to some other news. Uh, the second edition of India Mobile Congress commenced on Thursday in New Delhi with a main focus on the upcoming 5G technologies in India. The theme this year is New Digital Horizons, Connect, Create, Innovate, aimed to build upon forging industry relationships between key partners and to showcase leading edge technology. Cabinet Ministers Ravi Shankar Prasad, Suresh Prabhu, Manoj Sinha and Hardeep Singh Puri attended the inaugural session. And attending the event, IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad explained that India needs to have digital content in various Indian languages to move ahead as a digital economy. He further said that India is in the process of finalizing data protection law and uh, supports a digi digitization without any compromise on data integrity. Asset of India's transformation is that today, an ordinary Indian, a poor Indian, is having a, a smartphone in his hand and getting empowered with the power of technology. We are seeking to make 60 million Indian digitally literate, all with a smartphone in his hand. PM was very keen to make India a great center of digital payment. Today, digital payment is rising in India in a phenomenal manner. And Commerce Minister Suresh Prabhu, while addressing the session, said that India is expected to become a $10 trillion economy by 2035. Telecom industry leaders Sunil Mittal of Bharti Airtel, Kumar Mangalam Birla of Vodafone Idea and Mukesh Ambani of Reliance Industries Limited also addressed the inaugural session. After debuting successfully in 2017, this year's event is expected to attract over 1 lakh participants and 1,300 exhibitors. But of bringing India into a new power in terms of making changes in the world. $10 trillion economy is not just a slogan, it's a reality and we are sure we'll reach there before 2035. But as we have seen, with more technology penetration, with productivity improving, with the speed of communication happening, with the ease of doing business happening through technology, we can reach there sooner than later. And that would mean that 2035, India will be on a completely different look than what you see today. And on to the other big story of the day, the Enforcement Directorate has conducted searches at two locations of human rights watchdog Amnesty International India in Bengaluru in connection with the foreign exchange uh, contravention case. The searches were launched uh, late under the Foreign Exchange Management Act at two locations of the NGO in the city. The searches are in connection with the alleged violation of foreign direct investment norms that is linked to an earlier case of a revocation of FCRA license of the NGO by the Union Home Ministry in 2010. The agency, some time back, had frozen over a dozen bank accounts of environmental NGO Greenpeace and its linked entity after it conducted searches at their premises in Bengaluru on the charges of alleged forex violations after taking cognizance of the FCRA action against it. Big story from Jammu and Kashmir where six militants were killed on Thursday in two gun battles with the security forces in Baramulla and Anantnag districts of Jammu and Kashmir. The police official said that four militants were killed in Arwani operation in, in Anantnag district while two ultras were eliminated in an encounter in uh, Kireri in Baramulla. Arms and ammunition have been recovered from both the encounter sites. पुलिस और जॉइंट फोर्सेस आर्मी और सीआरपी ने मिलके इस एरिया का कॉर्डन किया और एक सस्पेक्टेड घर को जब हम सर्च कर रहे थे तो अंदर से हमारी पार्टियों पे फायर आया फायर आने के बाद हमने थोड़ा होल्ड किया यहाँ से और उसके बाद हमने बहुत सारे अपॉर्चुनिटीज दिए और बहुत एफर्ट्स किए कि मिलिटेंट जो है सरेंडर करें ताकि इनकी जान बचे लेकिन बहुत कोशिशों के बावजूद वो नहीं माने और उन्होंने वहाँ से हमारी पार्टियों पर फायर किया
Meanwhile, in another incident, an army jawan uh, was uh, killed and another injured in a uh, sniper fire by militants in Thral area of South Kashmir on Thursday, in second such incident within a week. Meanwhile, an encounter is underway between security forces and terrorists in North Kashmir's uh, Sopor district. Reportedly, two to three armed fighters are believed to be trapped in a residential area. And India and Bangladesh have signed several agreements for enhancing inland and coastal waterways connectivity for trade and cruise movements. Briefing media persons in New Delhi on Thursday, Shipping Secretary Gopal Krishna and his Bangladeshi counterpart Mohammad Abdus Samad informed that the two nations have signed an agreement to use Chattogram and Mongla ports in Bangladesh for the movement of goods to and from India. After the two-day meeting, uh, they also signed an, uh, an addendum to protocol on inland water transit and trade for the inclusion of uh, Dhubri in India and Pangao in Bangladesh as new ports of call. During the secretary-level talks, the two sides also finalized the SOP for the movement of uh, passengers and cruise vessels on inland protocol route and coastal shipping routes, which would enable the river cruise services between Kolkata, Dhaka, Guwahati, Jorhat and back. Let's get you all the international news now. Google has sacked 48 people, including 13 senior managers, over sexual harassment claims since 2016. Google CEO Sundar Pichai sent an email to all Google employees on Thursday saying that the company has fired 48 people over the last two years for sexual harassment. Of those uh, 48 people, 13 were senior managers and above, and none of them got an exit package when they were let go. The email was in response to a New York uh, Times story that said that uh, Google has uh, shielded a handful of company executives, including Android uh, creator Andy Rubin, from sexual misconduct allegations and offered massive payouts to leave. However, Pichai said that uh, the tech giant was taking a hard line on inappropriate conduct, he said that the New York Times story was difficult to read and that Google was dead serious about providing a safe and inclusive workplace. All the sporting action now and Pooja Dhanda won a bronze medal at the World Wrestling Championship in Budapest. Pooja defeated a 2017 European champion Grace Bulen of Norway 10-7 in the 57kg freestyle wrestling to become only the fourth Indian woman grappler to win a medal at the World Championship. While in the 50 kg weight category, Ritu Pogat lost her bronze medal bout to Oksana Livach of Ukraine 10-5. While Rio Olympic bronze medalist uh, Sakshi Malik uh, also failed to get past uh, the round, uh, losing a 2-3 to Hungarian Mariana Sastin. News from the world of badminton, Indian shuttlers PV Sindhu, Kidami Srikant and Saina Neval have entered the quarter-finals of the French Open in the women's singles. A second-seeded PV Sindhu defeated Sayako Sato of Japan 21-17-21-16 to move to the next round. She will uh, face uh, He Bing Jiao of uh, China today in her quarter-final bout. While in another women's singles, uh, Saina Nehwal defeated a Japanese Nozomi Okuhara 10-21-21-14. And in the men's singles, uh, Srikanth defeated his South Korean rival Lee Dong-kyung to enter the quarterfinals. He will face uh, Kento Momota of Japan today. While in another men's singles, uh, B. Sai Praneeth lost his bow to Indonesia's uh, Jonathan Christie and crashed out of the competition. And in the men's doubles, uh, the pair of uh, Manu Atri and B. Sumit Reddy defeated their Chinese opponents uh, to move uh, to the next round. The duo will face compatriots Satvik Sai Rajaranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty today. And Pakistan defeated Malaysia in uh, their fifth and final round-robin match of the Asian Champions Trophy in Muscat. The Pakistani side beat Malaysia 1-0 in their last round-robin match. Mohammad Irfan Jr. scored the lone goal of the match. Both Pakistan and Malaysia had already qualified for the semi-finals and also virtually assured to face each other in the last four stage. 
And Pakistan again will play Malaysia in the first semi-final, while India will take on Japan in the second semi-final tomorrow. And uh, with that, we come to the end of this edition of Breakfast News. But news and updates continue on your channel. Thanks for watching.